When it comes to retouching people, I find that it's easy to go way too far and try to take someone who, for example, is 60 years old and make them look like they're 30, or to take someone who is 20 and make them look 10. It just never looks realistic. So in this section, what we want to focus on is taking a realistic view of a person and simply knocking a few years off and not trying to make them look like they were born last week. The photo that we'll be working with is under the photo retouching folder in the album Taking Years Off. Now let's start by taking a look at what not to do. From the brushes tool down at the bottom of the viewer, we're going to select the retouch tool. And from here, we're going to do a little bit of repair work. If we look at the smile lines on our model here, it'd be very easy to simply eliminate these lines entirely. Let's start by doing that. I'll make the brush nice and big by using the scroll wheel on the mouse to adjust the size and ensure that I'm covering not just the line itself, but the whole shadow that's created by the line. I'm also going to manually choose a clone source. I'm going to option click just to the right of the line so that I'm cloning from just an inch or so away on her face. And then I'll go ahead and click and drag to remove that line. As you can see right off, it does a pretty good job. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit smaller. Choose a new source and get rid of that odd shadow that was created. And just like that, we've completely eliminated her smile line. Now, while that may seem like it's a nice step towards making someone look younger, it's completely unrealistic. And you'll find this in a lot of model photography on the web. You'll see pictures of people where their skin looks perfectly smooth and it simply isn't realistic. So what I like to do is not completely eliminate wrinkles and lines, but simply reduce them a little bit. Let's go ahead and reset this image. We'll go to the adjust tab. And from the gear menu here, choose Reset All Adjustments, and that will remove all the strokes that we just applied. This time, I'm going to simply reduce the effects of the wrinkles on her face instead of trying to eliminate them entirely. I'm also going to use a pen and tablet instead of the mouse. A lot of photographers prefer to use a pen and tablet when working with delicate brushing like this because it allows you more control, especially in delicate areas like around the eyes or following the curves of a wrinkle. The pen is not only a more natural tool to have in your hand, it also allows you to change the size of the tool depending simply on the pressure that you apply from the pen onto the tablet. Let's go ahead and get started with this wrinkle here. As I mentioned before, I don't want to eliminate it entirely, but simply reduce the effects of it. And the best way to do that is to lighten the shadow. By lightening the shadow inside of the wrinkle, I will create the illusion of having a less large or less damp of a wrinkle. So let's go back up to the retouching palette and start by choosing the right size. Now again, of course, I can choose a large size to eliminate it entirely, or if I choose a really small radius brush, I'll be able to get into just the darkest shadows in there to eliminate those. Now I also want to turn off detect edges, because the edge is in fact what I'm trying to get rid of in here, and I also want to take the opacity down. I don't want to eliminate it entirely, I just want to reduce the effects of it. So let's take it down to about 0.2 or 20%. I'm also going to let Aperture automatically choose the clone source for this. Now, as I go down and click and drag over that line, you'll see as I push a little bit harder or a little bit softer on my pen, that the width of that line increases and decreases. Now, as you can see, that's pretty good. We reduce that line dramatically. In fact, if I turn the retouch off and on, we can see the overall effect of that. And if you want to apply it a little bit heavier, simply go back over it again and just brush in the areas that you want to reduce. Let's do the same thing on this line here. Once again, I'll simply follow the line there, not completely eliminating it, but simply reducing the effects of it. And if I find that I can't get quite enough strength on there, I can always bring the opacity of that brush up a little bit and try it again. Perfect. I'm going to take it back down a little bit and go over some of these other areas. For example, the wrinkle on the forehead, under the eyes. And once again, you can see that by using the pen, I have much more control than I would if I was using the mouse. Let's get some of these around the cheeks here as well. And under the other eye. Don't forget the wrinkles above the eye as well. Those can be quite telling. Let's see what we've done so far. By simply toggling the retouch tool off and on, we can see the before and after of the effect. And as you can see, We've taken a few years off of this woman without dramatically changing her overall appearance. Now, of course, it's up to you how many of those wrinkles you eliminate or how far you go to take them out. But again, in my personal taste, I find that it's better to simply reduce the look of aging as opposed to trying to eliminate it entirely. 
And what you don't want is to end up with an image where the person looks completely unrealistically young. The retouching tool is not the only tool that we have for cleaning up skin. If you go back down to the brush tool, you'll find another one called skin smoothing. This is a great tool that allows us to very simply smooth out skin to get rid of really small wrinkles or texture on the skin that we may not like. Now for this particular tool, I find that turning off detect edges is almost necessary. If you leave that turned on, you can very easily end up with some strange pixelization across the image, which we don't want to see. So I prefer to turn that off. I'll also leave the strength all the way up at 1, or 100%, and you'll see why in just a moment here. Let's go ahead and get a nice big brush size. And we'll take the softness down a little bit, because I really do want to cover the whole face in here. And I'm just going to very quickly start brushing over her face. Maybe that brush is a little bit too big. On the Wacom tablet, there's actually a slider that's kind of like scrolling your finger on the scroll wheel on a mouse that I can move up and down to affect the size of my brush. Let's go ahead in here and brush in some smoothing over the wrinkles on the face, the chin. Let's get underneath the chin a little bit, some on the nose and under the eyes. And of course, let's not forget about the forehead. Now you may be thinking that that's a bit too strong, and you probably are right, but you'll notice down here under the skin smoothing that I actually have an intensity slider that I can choose to drink up to apply more smoothing, or bring down to apply less. Now again, you'll notice that I had chosen to apply this at strength of 1, that's full strength. And if we choose to look at the mask that was just created here, you'll see that we have applied this mask over the whole image at quite hard intensity. But the great thing about working this way is that it's very easy to scale this back. You already saw that we could scale the intensity back by simply dragging the intensity slider. But what about scaling back the mask itself? We can take the erase tool and again take the strength down this time, make the brush nice and big, and choose to simply brush out some of that intensity. And you'll notice that as the mask gets darker in there, the intensity applied to the overall image will be less. We can go back and preview this on the image itself and see what that looks like. If you want to bring the intensity up a bit to get a more smoothing effect, but then grab the eraser and erase some of that effect out, you can do that as well. Let's take the strength up a little bit more and brush around the face. If you have delicate areas you want to be very sensitive of, for example, the eyes or the lips on here, we can take the strength all the way up. Let's make the size a bit smaller in here. And let's turn detect edges on. With Detect Edges turned on, and perhaps a smaller brush would be in order, as we click and drag over here, you may not see much happening yet, but watch what's going to happen in just a moment as I switch over to take a look at the mask view. As we switch to view the brush strokes, you'll see that we have erased the mask area without affecting the skin outside of the lips. We can actually continue to paint in here while looking at the mask, without even bringing up the photo, but the edge detection is still looking at the photo itself. This will allow us to get very, very exact or very precise in the areas that we're brushing in or out. Now at any time, if you find some of these strokes are a little bit distracting, or perhaps you can see these lines in the image itself, you can always grab the feathering tool and then go in here and feather the lines between those strokes using the feather. Now as we go back to the main image, we should see a very good, very delicate skin smoothing applied. Let's tap the M key for master to bring the original image back up, and go back to the retouched one. As we go back and forth, you can see that we have not completely eliminated the wrinkles, but we reduce them and smooth out her face considerably. And it just makes her look a little bit softer, a little bit younger, without going too far.